Hey everyone, my name is Chris, welcome back to my channel, and in today's video I'll be discussing the Chicago Bulls to see if they're really ready to compete for a championship or in the near so future. I'll be going in depth and analyzing every trait or facet as, as an overall team as much as I can or as best as I can. And before we get into this video, please take this with a grain of salt that these are my personal notions, not factual information. And if you do enjoy today's video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It takes one second. It's free. I appreciate all the support. Thank you very much. And without further ado, uh, let's hop right into this video. So before we get started, I want to talk about these five key traits every championship team must have or check off to be able to compete for a title. Number one is leadership. Someone in the ownership, such as a coach, player, anyone in the ownership able to command or be a good mentor for players to improve daily is a key facet to compete for a title. Number two is shot creator, shot creators, as in evident in prior years, every championship team had one or multiple shot creators. Number three is a well-balanced offensive system or structure. Four is a good defensive unit or structure. And then five is a good supporting cast. Every championship team must have a good supporting cast. Right now, the Chicago Bulls stand at 19 and 10 in first in the Central Division and second in the Eastern Conference. Before I get into any of these key traits, my notion is that this is a huge improvement for Chicago in the previous years. No one expected this team to make the playoffs or push for the playoffs for the next three years without this prior offseason. The Bulls ownership finally took advantage of this offseason and made some key improvements and additions such as the Rosen, Ball, and Caruso, and etc. They're really trying to make a push for the playoffs, and I'm really glad that they are. They really showed a huge improvement. And just to keep this key trait simple, do, they, do I think they have a good leadership and I'm going to be honest, I'm going to keep this as a question mark to be completely honest. I know Crusoe was a great anchor for the defensive end for the Lakers. And I know DeRozan has made a huge sacrifice in his career playing in that awful San Antonio system. But I'm going to keep this as a question mark. I don't think they have any Valorant leaders going to the playoffs, especially with the low experience that they behold. And so I'm going to keep that as a question mark. But on to shot creation, the Bulls clearly do check this off. They have one of the most explosive offenses in the league, and it's due to their tandem of DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine. And in my personal opinion, I know some people may disagree, but I think Zach Levine is the best two-guard in the league as of right now. I just don't think Booker, Mitchell, or Buell are just any better than any facet of basketball. Maybe Booker, there's an argument with his post game, but Zach Levine is too elite at slashing with every layup package you can think of. An elite one motion pull up jump shot, can pass the ball really well, can score in the pick and roll, dominant drives, explosive just scoring at any point in the quarter. I, just an elite three point shooter, immense pressure at the rim in drawing contact and finishing through contact. This guy, I think, is the best two-guard in the league for a various amount of reasons. And let's not forget they have DeMar DeRozan, who's probably one of the best shot creators at his position as he plays the four position. And honestly, his immense gravity he beholds driving to the rim, and I mean just elite playmaking ability from the San Antonio offense that he's improved over the years. Just, a, I mean, a mid-range assassin, one of the best mid-range shooters of all time, elite drill package. Probably best post scorer at the guard position right now, if I'm being honest with you. Elite level footwork, every layup package, like I said. I mean, this guy's an elite shot creator. This is a mismatch for every guard if he gets you in the post or low block. It's just a mismatch, mismatch every time. As you can see, a little hesitation from him into the shooter's pocket, and that's just too easy. You can go over, under the screen, it's, and it's almost a bucket. He has this elongated, just far ahead dribble move as you can see it's a crossover but it's very elongated as you can see from any elite slasher drives right off the kick out and then kicks it out due to his immense gravity he has every package you want as a mid-range shot creator can turn left or right from the fadeaway from any shoulder has immense footwork has every floater package you want can go up and under reverse layups just contact finish you contact as you can see the elongated crossover like i said is such a lethal move and him and levine are really a top-notch efficient duo if i'm being honest and it's kind of upsetting as a derosa fan myself to see that this was really considered one of the worst free agent signings of the year I don't understand how analytics really ruined the sport to the point that they thought DeRozan was, was an all-star or an elite scorer, but it's really sad to see that people really turn his team off just because of DeRozan coming from San Antonio. 
Now onto another key facet, do they have a good offensive unit or structure or system? Yeah, I would check this off easily. They're one of the best offensive teams in the league when hot, especially hot. Just them adding ball and then them adding Vucevic to, the, to their system is such a huge factor going to the playoffs. Vucevic is a good post scorer, phenomenal stretch big, can dribble or put the ball on the floor. Just like I said, the playmaking ability Luka holds. This team is really a force to be reckoned with. And then, like I said, Lonzo Ball being an elite shooter now. He's not the best shot creator. He's not the best pick and roll scorer. But he just needs to do his role as he can just shoot threes and then pass out when he drives. And just like I said, they're one of the best offensive teams in the league, honestly. And now into another key trait they check off immediately, honestly, is do they have a good defensive unit? Yeah, this is easily a check off. They have two of top, you can argue top five perimeter defenders at the guard position with Lonzo and Caruso. Two six foot four, or Caruso six four and Lonzo six six. Very sturdy defenders, laterally quick, very intelligent on, the, on that side of the ball. I mean, they both really jab, and as you can see, just Lonzo with quick hands pokes it out. They both have tendencies to really jab and then strip the ball and then go just completely erase passing lanes. And then defense turns to points with transition offense. I mean, this team is so good defensively. It's kind of sad to see that they lost Patrick Williams. They also have Derrick Jones Jr., who's actually a great defender for Miami. Javante Green's an all right defender, and then Io is an all right defender in himself. But. The two noticeable defenders that are good on their team is Lonzo and Caruso. And as you can see, Lonzo's just jabbing and stripping at the ball relentlessly. These two are such great defenders that they hold almost every facet as well as a guard. Can take contact, can draw charges, can strip the ball off drives. Very strong lateral defenders can hold up against most forwards in the league or even some centers occasionally. And as you can see right now, Lonzo gives no leverage to RJ Barrett because he doesn't jump. And they negate so many passing lanes. As you can see, Lonzo Ball just completely gambling on the plate and then scores on that gamble. They're so good on the defensive end. And not to mention, I haven't really mentioned Derrick Jones Jr., Io, or Javante Green. And just, they're missing Patrick Williams, which is really a blow, like I said. It, as you can see, Crusoe is just so sturdy and laterally quick. He doesn't really get shoved off too much from any guard in the league unless it's the best shot creators in the league. And they score off so well from transition just because they create so many turnovers. This team is really a menace on the defensive end, and there's, there's really a good reason why they're a top 10 defensive team. People are probably going to argue, oh, Vucevic is such a bad defender. Just Caruso and Lonzo don't really allow him their, his exploits to be shown too much because they're so good on the end. They're, they have a lot of hustle, they're relentless, they're very intelligent, and they're physically capable, capable to really shut down any guard in the league if they really wanted to. I'm really only spotlighting Lonzo and Crusoe due to their, I think they're the best defenders on the team. As you can see, negates Durant from going left and just hands up defense. Every good coach in the league explains this is a necessity. Always hands up, always being laterally shuffling. And as you can see, cleanly gets around the screen, negating any drive. And this is textbook defense as he cle cleanly pickpockets Barden. And these two are just so good on the defensive end. And as to really sum it up, to show that how good they are as a team, these are their top two players. Levine is averaging 26, 5, and 4 on historic shooting splits. This is damn near a 50, 40, and 90 season for him. Even Timberwolves fans knew his potential going into the future. He's one of the best shot creators in the league. He's probably, in my opinion, he's the best two guard in the league. And then you got his partner in crime, DeMar DeRozan, who's averaging 27, 5, and 4 off a really efficient shooting splits of 50% from the field. Not so efficient, just barely below league average and three point percentage. Just keep the notion that's not his style. He doesn't take many threes. He's taking a lot more now, but it's still below average. And he has an incredible free throw percentage, one of the best in the leagues. And these two guys are such elite level scorers. They really create problems on the defensive end for opponents. And then, not to mention, I haven't even mentioned their, their supporting cast with Caruso, Derrick Jones, Vucevic, Devontae Green, and then Ball. As you can see, Lonzo Ball is the starting guard. He's out due to, I think, COVID. Kobe White still their bench point guard. Caruso's out. Usually their lineup consists of when starting is Lonzo, Levine, DeRozan, Patrick Williams, and Vucevic. But they're still competing with the best teams in the league with many injuries and COVID protocols. 
I just think this team is really set for the future. I think they can really compete. They're probably a dark horse, in my opinion, for the championship. And not to mention, they also have a candidate for Rookie of the Year. And I, I'm not going to pronounce his last name, but he's really a candidate for Rookie of the Year. And then you have a top five center in Vucevic. And I really think this team is destined for greatness in the future. And now onto my personal opinion, do they check off these five key traits right to compete for a title? One, leadership. I I'm gonna keep that as a question mark. I don't think they blow it out the window or they they don't have any leaders or any leadership values. I'm just gonna keep that as a question mark. As the other four, shot creation, that's a definite check. That's easily there. One of the best shot creating teams in the league. Three, do they have a well-balanced offensive system? Yes, with the role players they have and the two superstars they have, they can easily score on with the best of them. Do they have a good defensive unit or structure? Easily with Javante Green, Caruso, Ball, Derrick Jones Jr. And then when Patrick Williams becomes healthy, they're a real problem. And then their supporting cast is really, you could argue it's top five, top six. They've really shown out when key players have been hurt, the role players and the bench players have really shown up in key important games. They really have shown up. Do I think they can compete for a title? This year, probably not because of Patrick Williams being out and then just rampant, just absurd amounts of health issues that this team has sustained. I just don't think they can really win this year. Maybe next year they can really make some noise. I do think they'll make some noise in the playoffs, but can they win the chip with the roster they have right now? Yeah, I really think so. However, keep this, keep this notion, this is my personal opinion, this is not factual information, but I do think the team that they assembled can, has really showcased a championship mentality for the next few years. Now, this will be the end of today's video. I appreciate it if you watched through the whole video. Thank you very much. And if you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. It takes one second. It's free. I appreciate all the support. Thank you very much. And in my next video, I'll be analyzing the Phoenix Suns going in depth to see if they can really go back to the finals once again and if they're really the team that they're meant to be. And before I end this video, I have a link in the description or extension to Worldwide Slash National Hotline. So if you or someone you know needs help physically, mentally, or emotionally, please check the link in the description. It's free and it may help yourself or someone you know who's not doing so well. Hope you had a great Christmas, happy holidays, stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. My name is Chris, and I'm out. Peace.